everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to knit one of the patterns out of this book. It is an excellent edition for if you're interested in knitting stuffed animals or just kind of knitted animals in general, like for a project or something else. Um, I would recommend it. I've knitted a couple of the patterns out of here, and it's really easy to follow. So this is the book we'll be using today. All right, so here are all of the things you will need for this project. We have a main yarn. So this is gonna be the main color that we make this in. This is for the eyes. These are size 6 millimeter knitting needles. You can use really any size under size 10 US. Um, it really depends on what size of yarn you're using though, because if you're using a DK weight like this, you'll want something that's smaller. If you're using um, kind of a larger weight of yarn, you'll want something a little bit bigger. So. It's entirely dependent on what kind of yarn you're using. Um, I wouldn't recommend using size like 10 with a DK weight because that's not going to turn out very nice, but really it's up to you what size you want to use. We have some polyester stuffed animal filling. We have scissors. This will be good for cutting the yarn when we get to the end. And I can pick this up. We have a darning needle or a tapestry needle. I've heard these called both. There isn't really much of a discernible difference. Either will work here. So that should be everything. And then the pattern is available in the description for anyone that wants to follow along with the pattern. I will try to specify how many stitches and how many rows and all of that as we go, um, but just a heads up that you will want to have probably a pattern in front of you while you're doing this. Alright, so you can see now I just have the knitting needles and yarn sitting out ready. So what we're going to do is you're going to take the tail end of your yarn, you're going to unwind a ways. Then you're going to, so this is your working yarn, it's the yarn attached to the ball, so this side is going to be your working yarn. This side is your tail, because it's not attached to anything, it's just a tail. And you're going to make a loop, just kind of a slip knot here. Nice little loop there. You're going to take one of your knitting needles and slide it through the loop, so that it's on there pretty good. You can see my hand is already jumping into position here. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the working yarn side, you're going to put that around your thumb, like so, and the tail side you're going to put around your index finger, like so. Readjust this a little bit. All right. So you can see I'm holding it in kind of a triangle shape. So we've got working yarn right here. I'll just start with the needle and then tail side over here. Tangled myself up there. Alright, so we're going to take this and slide under that working yarn and go over the tail and let that slide off my thumb and onto the needle. And we're going to be doing this for 12 more stitches because we need a total of 14 for this pattern. So we're just going to carefully go through and I'll try to show you as best I can. So under and over, and under and over, under and over, and so on. What you want to do is you want to make sure you keep, you know, this side over here and this side over here. Don't want to get those mixed up, but you still want to slide it over your thumb. Every time you have a new stitch. 
And the nice thing about this method is that let's see, it works about as well as any other method for casting on, and you have a lot of kind of control of where everything is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen. All right, so you want 14 stitches. Um, we're going to untangle this real quick. You notice I have a lot of tail left. Um, you can tie it off if you want to, to make it easier to deal with. There's, you can just let it hang. Some people do. Um, for right now, as long as it isn't being a pain, we'll leave it where it is. So now we'll get on to the knitting portion. So this project consists of 16 rows, not counting this first row. Some projects count the first like casting on row as a row. Some projects don't. This one doesn't. So we're gonna start with a knit row. And you'll notice how I'm holding my yarn here. I've got it kind of wrapped around my pinky here and feeding up through here and around and over. Um, however you want to hold your yarn is fine. My reason for doing it this way is because I like having a little extra control. Sorry, I'll show a little more um, in detail way to do a knit stitch in a second. I needed to get that first one on there because that one's the tricky one. So what we're going to do is you're going to take your working yarn. You see I've got it wrapped around my finger a couple of times here. You're going to slide your needle through this little loop. You want to go through this side, not through this side. Right along there. And you're going to take your working yarn here and you're going to wrap it around and pull it through. And then you've got a stitch. And then this little fellow can go off the end of the needle. So you're going to put it through, wrap it around, pull it back out, and move that one off the needle. And you're going to keep doing this for the rest of this row, and then I'll show you how to do a purl stitch. And this pattern is basically all knit row, purl row, knit row, purl row. Um, 16 rows in total. It's called stocking stitch. So basically you do one row of knitting, one row of purling, and each knit row is followed by a purl row, and so on and so forth. And you just keep going like this for a good long ways. Oops, there we go. Alright, so in a second, once we get this row done, I'll show y'all what we're making. Actually, we'll do the purl row and then I'll show you what we're making. I completely forgot to put it in with the supplies. Um, if I knew how to add it in post, I would, but unfortunately I'm not the most tech-savvy person here. So we've got our little tiny bit of knitting right here. We're going to go ahead and rewrap this. And you'll have noticed that I keep the working yarn on this side for knit row. Now we're going to move it around and put it on this side, and we're going to do a purl row. So the way that you purl is basically you take your needle, and instead of going in this way, you go in this way. And then you wrap your yarn around and pull it through. You'll notice while I'm purling, I tend to use my fingers. <laughs> to do the wrapping around part instead of taking a second to actually wrap it. Um, that's because I've been doing this for a while and I got tired of stopping in the middle to just be like, all right, wrap it around. That's not how you wrap it around, but you get what I mean. Wrap it around and pull it through. Um, Now, you'll notice that the tension on my yarn is a little tight. Um, that is not intentional. I don't intentionally hold it like I'm trying to strangle someone with it. Um, 
and you especially don't want to hold it too tightly because you want it to be able to kind of move and breathe a little bit when you're done um, especially if you're making something like a hat whoops lost my lost my yarn there for a second redo that there we go. Some of you are probably thinking, this this person does not seem particularly experienced with this, um, and there are a couple of factors I need you to take into consideration. One, I don't usually have to film this, <laughs> so I'm having to kind of exaggerate movements for the camera and such that I wouldn't normally have to. Um, I'm also not used to knitting on a table. Usually my hands are in my lap. So, this is a little awkward and a little clunky, and I'm sorry if you can hear the clicking of the needles on the table, but this is how we do things. So, all right, so we're gonna set this down for a couple of seconds and I'll show you what we're making, because I didn't do that before. So this is a little fish. Um, this is what we're trying for. Not, it's not gonna look exactly the same as this one, You'll see that this one's got a little bit of a excess yarn here, um, and the tail looks a little sad, but these are relatively easy to make. Um, I can do them in half an hour, so this is our little fishy friend. They are squishy, kind of fun. It's got a little eye there. Um, you can put a little smiley face on it if you want. And you can kind of see where the tail is wrapped right there. I'll show you how to do that. So, All right. Back to the main thing. <laughs> a little detour there for a second. Okay. So to make this especially clear that it's purl then knit. You can see here, I can't show all of this. Let me swap out to my secondary fish here. So you can see I've been working on this one for a little while. Um, this one is going to, you're probably gonna see this one later in the video, but basically you can see on this side, it looks very smooth, very uniform. And on this side, it looks a bit more lumpy and kind of bumpy and not as smooth as this side. So this is the knit side, and as you can see, it's all the same. And this is the purl side. And as you can see, that's all the same. So this is pretty much what you're working towards is having a piece that looks like this and is uniform in the kind of stitch that you see. So hopefully that's how this will turn out for everybody. So we're gonna go ahead and get back to it. Sorry if there's any background noise. Um, sorry if you can't hear me actually. I don't know where the mic is on this camera. So there's a good chance y'all can't hear me, to be fair. Um, I heard it was up on the top part somewhere. That's not a microphone. So, I guess editing me will find out. <laughs> um, so for those of you that don't know, I am not actually a librarian here. Um, I am interning here over the summer. Well, the summer of 2021, I should specify for folks listening in the future. Um, basically, I am in grad school to be a librarian, and as one of the final classes I have to take, I had to basically do an internship at a library, archive, museum, or similar establishment and I chose here so this 
program is basically part of my final for that class. Um, so as you can see, we're just kind of knitting and pulling away. Um, like I said, 16 rows. This is the fourth row. So if we get to about 30 minutes of this and it looks like we're not going to get to the final portion, um, I will swap it out for something else. Um, and y'all will get to watch me do that. Sorry, if I keep getting distracted, it's because I'm looking at my hands getting recorded in the video. And it's it's quite something. Um, I guess one thing you never realize watching videos of people knitting on YouTube is exactly how like tiring it is to have your arms like this for a certain length of time. Um, is all one long video for the most part. The bulk of it is going to be knitting. Just watching me wield a pair of knitting needles for 45 minutes. Um, let's see. So now that we have a little bit knitted, I can tell you how to, like, kind of read this. You'll notice it's not really staying flat very nicely. It's kind of curling over here. That's to do with the tension. We talked about that before. So how tight you hold this part here um, will determine kind of how tight this is, which makes sense. Um, so the tighter this is, the more curling you'll get as you go. At least that I've noticed. I'm sure there's other explanations for it too, but that is one of them. Um, so basically, to count your stitches and the number of rows you've done, you're gonna look for, I don't know if it'll show up very nicely on camera, these little kind of triangle things right here. So one, two, three, four, five on this side. And then it might actually be easier to read it on the pearl side. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Depends on who it is. So I'm going to turn it like this because this is easier for me to see it. And you're going to pick one of these rows going up and basically go one, two, three, four, five. So we're five rows in. Show you a better example. We're going to bring this fellow back for the moment, and you're going to see this actually contrasts way better on camera. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, roughly. There might be a fifteenth on there. Um, Boy, for someone that made this, I don't know how many rows there are, and that's not good. All right. So, we're going to go to the back. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So, the back tells us that there are sixteen, the front tells us there are fourteen. And you may be wondering why that is. And the reason is because at the bottom down here, when we did our first row, 
it's really tiny because it was the first row on this and so it's kind of hard to spot but if you look closely you can see it and we didn't count that row because I wasn't paying attention to it <laughs> so there's 16 rows which means that this little fellow is ready for the final step we're not there yet we'll be there soon all right so let's continue I'm gonna do a couple more rows on camera and then we'll swap to well then I'll do it off camera and come back when we've got like five rows or so left so I can show you guys how to finish this off um, so we've got a pearl row um, so in terms of where you can leave questions and things like that um, the comment section on this video is a great place to leave questions. However, if it's the kind of question that is more complicated or if you don't feel comfortable leaving a comment on the video, um, I have an Instagram set up specifically for knitting related questions. So you can find me on Instagram at a knitting librarian. Um, I'll write that down for folks in case you can't hear quite what I'm saying or if you need that written down for you so you can see it better. Um, but yeah, I am on Instagram at a knitting librarian and that's not to be mistaken with the knitting librarian who apparently also has an Instagram account um, and has written several books actually, which I had no idea this person existed until I went on Instagram and tried to set up an account specifically for this project and I was like, who's thought of a knitting librarian? Um, so it should be this. It'll also be available in the description. So if you're if you have any questions and you don't feel comfortable leaving them in the comments or if you have questions you've left them in the comments you haven't gotten a response and it's been a while um, feel free to contact me at the knitting librarian on Instagram and I will get back to you on your question so let's do another Knit row real quick. I'm gonna leave that up for a little bit and then we'll do a bit of a jump to this being done. Um, not done, done, but like closer to done. Um, and then I can show you guys how to finish that off and we'll go from there. So so far, thank you guys for watching. Um, there's more video left, obviously, but I just feel I should thank you for watching this because I don't know. <laughs> Did think, didn't think many people would, um, to be honest. It's kind of a niche thing to knit this particular critter. So yeah, you can find me here on Instagram for any questions or you can leave them in the comments or contact the library just stop in and ask them um, they should be able to get questions to me that's probably going to be the most time consuming method but um, it is an option so those are the options for getting a hold of me I'm going to keep working on this and I will be back in a little bit for you guys it'll be a bit longer than that for me so 
All right, so I'm back and we have about 12 rows here. So a couple of things that I realized off camera, of course. Um, first, I forgot to mention this. So if the row that's coming up is a knit row, it's gonna be an odd number because our first row was a knit row. So subsequent knit rows are gonna be like three, five, seven, so forth. So the odd numbered rows. If it's an even row, it's gonna be a purl row because that was our second row onward, right? So if you're struggling to keep track of how many rows, that's a little tip. Um, also, if you're having a difficult time keeping track of how many rows you've done, you can take a piece of paper and just do tallies or write it down somewhere. I have tallies. Yeah. So you'll see I do tallies usually. This is a different project. Um, completely different project. I just happen to have my notes on me. So you'll notice I do tallies. I've crossed those out because I was done with that part. But, um... I like to have a piece of scrap paper sitting by just to keep track. Just in case, you know, I can read it, but sometimes it's nice to have the little reminder there so that if I leave the project sitting for a long period of time and I'm not really paying attention, then I know kind of where I left off and I don't have to sit there and count rows, especially if it's something that's like 70 or 80 rows long. That gets tedious very quickly, especially if it's a shorter, or not shorter, a thinner um, yarn weight. But the most notable example of that was when I tried to knit the walrus out of this book. Um, it was an interesting experiment. So yeah, um, those are a couple of ways that you can keep track of which row you are on. Um, we're just gonna finish this little guy up real quick. So much for my <laughs> 35 seconds per row. So far that's not really going according to this project, you'll notice I trimmed the tail a little bit because it had gotten tangled a little bit while I was off camera. So, Obviously, this is going to be an even row, which puts us at 14. We have two more to go, and then I'll show you guys how to finish this one off, and then we'll do the finishing touches with the stuffing and the sewing part. Whoops! Completely lost everything there. Hold on a second. I'm going to move. Oof. Oh no, my hands have changed position. Ah. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. Um, hope you guys can still see. This is actually slightly more comfortable for me. So, you can see here we've got a nice little chunk of knitting going so far. Uh, a couple of little holes in places that are a little bigger than you might like. Um, I like knitting these up a little bit bigger which is why the larger needle gauge um, because they make really good cat toys especially if after you stuff them you put catnip in them um, for that reason sometimes when I'm doing the tail I won't tie it the way you're supposed to on the pattern just so that it can't get eaten by a cat 
because cats are notorious for <laughs> seeing string and going, I'm gonna get the string. And if you leave, I'll show you. If you do this little twisty bit at the end here, um, a cat can tear that off in literally seconds and eat it. So if you're doing the cat toy variant, I would recommend leaving that off and just doing a little bit of sewing along that edge to make it so that your cat can't eat it. Um, or at least not easily. There are ways to do that. I could show you um, in this video, but I'm mainly concentrating on the stuffed animal variant. If, whoops, <laughs> sorry about that. I had to move my yarn. Ended up with a quite lovely arm shot there. Um, Sorry for the clanks. There's not a whole lot I can do about that. Um, like, I am literally elbows on the counter trying to keep the needles from hitting the table because I do feel the pain of the clinks. <laughs> so, forgive me. I am doing what I can for y'all. Um, so, we have four stitches left. And I know I can run around in the back. Alright, down to the last normal stitch. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And that is the 16 rows. I know I did a lot of this off camera so you didn't get to see, but the nice thing about a video for this is that if you need to go back because you didn't quite understand something or you want to watch me do it a couple of times before trying it yourself it's up here it's available you can watch it as many times as you need to without any you know issues um which is why we're doing it in this format as opposed to a live stream where you could only watch it once Maybe it gets recorded and uploaded, but it's not going to be available forever, necessarily. With this, it will be available for quite a while, and you can just watch it whenever you need to. So, now that we have our 16 rows, we're going to do a quick count to make sure it is actually 16 rows, and then I counted everything correctly. So, the first thing in our favor is that this is knitting side up, which means that the next row would be a knit row. That means that this is an odd number coming up, and then we just finished an even number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So we have sixteen rows on here, which means we're ready for the next step. So for the next step, you will need <laughs> two knitting needles and a little bit of practice. So for this, we're going to take our yarn like we've been holding it so far. And what we're going to do is take our second needle and go through like we're going to do a knit stitch. So instead of going through this first one, we're going to go through the second one because we're going to be knitting these two stitches together. So you want to go in through this second stitch here, go through the first one, so you've got both of those on the needle, go through, wrap around, and pull through. So you're knitting two stitches together, pretty much. It's called K2 Tog in abbreviations. Um, it just means knit two stitches together. You can also purl two together. That's a little bit more complicated, luckily for this. 
we just need to knit them together. So we're gonna take, make sure I'm on camera, we're gonna take our needle, slide it through, grab him, pull him through, and then push that off. And we're gonna keep, whoops, don't know what happened there. Gonna keep on going until we get to the last stitches here. Now some patterns are gonna have you knit a certain number of the stitches or purl if you're doing a purl two together and then knit a couple of them together and keep going. Um, this one you do that you just knit all of knit two together for every single pair so you end up with seven stitches here and then we're gonna be taking our handy scissors <laughs> you'll notice I'm setting this one aside we don't need him anymore um, we're gonna take our handy scissors we're gonna give ourselves a nice little tail to work with here nothing too terribly long if I can do this right first try that'd be awesome we're gonna cut right through and we're gonna set our ball of yarn aside for later we'll need that later so now we have a purl side up that's not really gonna matter we're gonna take our little end friend here we're gonna slide that through this side of the stitch like you're doing a purl and the reason for that is you want it to wrap around instead of just going right back through the way it was because that could drop this stitch and we don't want that and we're gonna go through the next guy just gonna pull him off and the next one or guy or gal whichever you want to call it it's it's non-gendered knitting <laughs> we're going with guy because I feel like it but you can label your knitting however you choose or just call it knitting um, just call it a stitch However you feel comfortable doing it, doesn't really matter too much. And we're gonna pull this last one through. And we're left with something that looks a bit like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take our other needle and set it over here. Because we don't need those for this next part. So what you're gonna do is once you've got something that looks like this and you've got your working tail pulled through here, you're gonna gently pull until it makes kind of a little bunched area at the front here. It should do that all the way around, hopefully, presumably, if you're lucky. I am not lucky, it's not really doing that for me. Well, now it is, we pulled it a bit more now. So it should now look a little something like this. If you let it go, it's gonna look a little different because it's gonna start to unravel and now you're gonna need that darning or tapestry needle so I will be right back all right so we're back for the moment um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna knit two together on this one as well and the reason for that is that I want to make sure that you guys get a pretty good idea of what to do um, before I send y'all off to do it on your own. So we're just gonna really quickly do this one up as well. And then we'll jump back into showing you how to sew everything up, stuff it and do the eyes and all of that. So as you can see, we've got our 16 rows here. So we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna insert it right through this stitch right here and through this stitch as well take the yarn wrap it around and pull it through and this is just to make sure you guys get a nice look at what to do so that if for some reason um, you couldn't tell quite what was going on the last time when I was showing you on the other one or if the contrast is weird this will give you a nice bonus 
idea of what to do. Um, so here we go. And then I'll show you how to break off the yarn and go through the remaining seven stitches again as well, just so that we're clear on all of that. Um, I would have liked to have gone into more detail about the knitting, purling, casting on part of the process, but what I will say is that there are a lot of tutorials and things on YouTube, which is where this video is uploaded, and if you're interested, you can always look up how to knit, how to purl, how to cast on, and find the method that best suits you. So, I'm going to set that over there. Give ourselves a bit of a nice tail here. These scissors do not like yarn. There we go. You can tell because the edges are kind of weird. I mean, you can't tell on camera, but it's a little more obvious here. So it's got kind of a fluffy end here. Um, that does happen. Sometimes you get a nice clean cut, as you'll see on this end of the tail. Um, it depends, really. So we're going to set him over there, and we're going to set this fellow over here with our other, other knitting needles. So now I'm going to take my bit of string and I'm going to go through this stitch and I'm going to demonstrate this time. So you want your loop to go around like that and in this way because if you go through this way you risk losing this stitch because what you're basically doing is going back through from the direction where the yarn initially came from. It's not as bad when you're doing it on something that's been knit together twice because then you've got the extra stitch down here holding this in place, but it is a concern if you're doing single knit, um, which some patterns do actually call for you to break off the yarn and pull it through the stitches this way on single knit things. So just, just so that folks know, you don't want to go like straight through this way. You want to go through this way as if you're knitting it again, just without knitting it, you're just pulling it through. Um, casting off really. <laughs> but not exactly casting off because casting off involves two needles and it's usually still connected to the um, working yarn, which I don't have anything to show you guys how to cast off. Surprisingly, I didn't think of that. So next time, if y'all want a second video of this process with a different knitting project maybe, uh, contact your local librarians and tell them you want to see me again and we'll do this again. <laughs> but you gotta let folks know because um, like I said I'm not here permanently. This is my final project for the end of the summer. This video that we're filming now that you folks are watching. Um, so there's a good chance this is the last you'll see of me. But if you would like to request seeing me again, feel free. I do live in the Door County area, um, not Algo not the Kiwani side. I live on the Door County side of things. Um, but I would be happy to come back and do another knitting program, maybe in person even, if folks are interested in that. Just, just let folks know, really. Um, we have two little cute things. You'll notice this fellow is smaller than this one. It's because of the knitting needle difference. So really quickly, now that I have no yarn on these, um, these fellows are five millimeter, which 
I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Maybe, you might be able to see that. Um, this is a five millimeter needle. So, five millimeter. This is a six millimeter. <laughs> I don't know if those are exact measurements, to be fair. Um, I honestly didn't think to pull out a measuring tape and check, but this is the size difference, so this pattern can be knit up on a variety of different size needles, as I have shown you, um, with a variety of different colors, because we've got a green one here, which is the finished sample product. We have kind of a teal, and we have a purple, and I will show you how to finish these guys up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our friend the darning needle, and we're going to actually move our little teal friend to the side. I'll show you how to do this with him too, and we're going to take this end that's been kind of pulled through these stitches. We're going to take this end and we're going to put it through our little needle here. Um, a warning, some knitters are very fond of the idea of just weaving through the threads to tie things off. Some, some folks have accepted that they are not particularly good at weaving things through in a way that stays and have chosen to tie knots in things when they feel things need to be knotted. I fall into the category of people that believe in tying knots in things because when I don't, things tend to fall apart eventually. So what I'm going to do here is you can see that I've kind of matched up the edges with this smooth side out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little needle, slide it in just kind of on this side line of knitting. After I've matched it up, slide it in. We're going to want to go further up to the top here. There we go. Did this the wrong way, but it'll still pull that tight. So you can see my little fish is now closed up at the top here. So it's a nice way to make sure that it doesn't escape and pull apart. So now we're just going to kind of weave in this end here through the stitches and sew these together, these two edges. Um, I try and go for following the actual stitch line. So if you look, if you match it up right, you can see that it's two knit sides here. I like to try and grab from the middle and sew it up so it blends in just a teensy little bit better. Um, oops, wrong side. <laughs> that wouldn't really end well. Um, that would secure it, but it wouldn't secure it in a more hidden way. Um, there is a professional way to do this in terms of you can look up how to What is the word that I am looking for? Um, there's a seam for this and I can't think of what it is might be ladder stitch, but I don't think it's ladder stitch. Um, there's a stitch that you can use to basically hide the seam when you're sewing up knitting. Um, for the life of me, I can't think of what it is right now. If I remember, I'll post it in the description or mention it in one of the latter parts of this video. Maybe when we're sewing up the teal one, <laughs> I'll have had time to look it up and quickly drop in what the name of that is. Um, 
I mean, it's not hiding it too terribly so far. You can kind of see where it is if I turn it, but it's not as obvious as it would be if I just went like straight through. Um, it's not going to look as pretty as if you did it the like extra special knitting sewing way. Um, and for anyone that has any qualms with their kid sewing something, um, this is a dull needle. It has a little tiny bit of a point, but it's not like gonna really stab you if you're sewing with it. Um, which I think is a minor difference between a tapestry needle and a darning needle, because I think tapestry needle has a little bit more of a point to it. Um, depending on the company and what kind of tapestry needle you get, but I would recommend just going to Walmart and picking up whatever the default, like, knitting sewing knitting needle is, like darning needles work, tapestry needles, <clears throat> excuse me, tapestry needles work. As long as it sews, it should do. So now you can see I've got kind of a <laughs> situation here where we've got a little pouch of knit work with these two little strings hanging off them. And uh, if I really, really wanted to, I could make it into a little tiny pocket, you know, give it a little handle. It's not what we're going to do today. What we're going to do is we're going to take our bag of stuffing. Uh, usually you won't find your store selling fibers in this kind of a bag. This is a Ziploc full of um, polyester toy stuffing that I brought from home because I have a big, like, I can't gesture this on camera because I can't figure out where my hand is. It's it's about yay big at home. Maybe a little bit bigger. I didn't feel like that would be best to put in. So I brought a little Ziploc baggie. Um, it, it works fine if you need a storage method for kind of a smaller amount of fiber. That's probably going to be too much. Um, I didn't want to bring too little, so I just kind of stuffed the bag full. Um, you probably won't need quite this much. You definitely won't need this much. But they tend to come in giant bags, so I'm going to kind of ball this a little bit. I want to make sure that those little particles are sticking together nicely. Because um, you don't want to shove this in there and then find out that they've just kind of separated because that leaves it lumpy. Um, who wants a lumpy fish? I mean, come on. I'm sure there's someone out there that wants a lumpy fish, actually. Never mind. <laughs> you know, if you're the kind of person that wants a lumpy fish, have at. I will not blame you. It's, they're cute, okay? Um, so you can see this has got a little bit of a weird kind of thing going on with some of the fiber. It's probably because I got a cheaper brand. It happens sometimes. Um, this particular stuffing I've had for many, many years. You'll notice this is a fairly large fish compared to our little friend over here who is relatively small and cute. You'll also notice that this has a lot of holes in between. Um, it's because I'm not using the right gauge of needle for this thickness of yarn. Um, this is a DK weight yarn, so it should be used with something that's like a 3.5 to like a size 5 needle. I think that's what I wrote down. Yeah, yeah, 3.5 to 4.5. 5 is also fine. Um, that's kind of the recommended for this gauge because otherwise you'll end up with these little holes kind of along here, which is also why I don't advise knitting with larger needles if you're using a lighter weight yarn. Um, but we're here to show you what happens when you do. So 
we're gonna stuff this little guy nice and full of our polyester toy stuffing um, I like to leave it fairly round but still a little flat so we're gonna pull our ends tight here kind of nicely tight and then I'm gonna take the longer of my two ends We'll weave this one in later and tie it off and all that, but for now, this is how we're doing things. So, we're gonna attach this to our needle again, real quick. Whoops, it's decided to unwind itself. That does happen occasionally when you're trying to put, um, especially if it's a yarn that you've been working with for a while and it's kind of getting a little bit weird at the edges um, that can happen where it'll decide to unwind from the rest of it as you're trying to put it through a needle so just keep that in mind and it shouldn't be too terrible of a thing uh, so now we're gonna carefully find out where our ends are gently pull that through oops <laughs> that does happen occasionally So we're gonna sew this up a little bit. We might add some more stuffing in before I close it up completely. Um, and I don't think I said this before, but the amount of stuffing kind of depends on you. If you want it really like a thick, heavily stuffed fish, then you know use as much stuffing as you feel you need to. Um, just make sure you leave enough room that you can tie off the tail when it's time. So, I think this will be good enough. Um, let's just finish this off. Alright, so now this end seam is closed. You can see the entire body is one little stuffed. The stuffing is poking out in the holes and places. Um, a little stuffed kind of parcel of knitting and stuffing. Sorry, I had to push up my glasses real quick. So what we're gonna do <clears throat> is real quick sew in these ends. So what I like to do is I like to take my needle and just kind of push it through kind of the high point and then go back through like you would do if you were doing a button stitch um, on normal sewing. You notice that kind of locks in the end there and then I'll just kind of carefully weave my end in a little bit. Don't want it to be too obvious where it is but I want it to blend in a little nicely. Sometimes if there's some larger gaps I'll work my way down to the larger gaps and then I'll just kind of fill them in like this so that they're not quite as obvious so that you don't have stuffing going everywhere. Um, so as you can see that didn't really fix a whole lot but it's a little less open. This will show it a little better. So we're going to push up through that one and you'll notice there's a layer under now so you can't see that hole quite as much. Then we're going to wrap it and pull it through and then for my end I'm going to carefully slide this down through the body of the fish, pull it out on the other side, Pull it a little tighter than I normally would and cut it. Then you can kind of tug a little bit to even that out a little bit and now you have your end hidden. So now we're going to do this length here and then we'll make this look more like a fish and less like a blob. Unfortunately it will have blob stages so let me just tuck my end, my little bits of loose leftover yarn over there. 
I'm gonna put this one through. Just kind of move that around a little bit. Should have probably done that before I sewed it up, but it's not gonna kill it. So push that through and do a loop. And that's slightly hidden, but we're gonna do a little bit better on this, so just gonna weave it in and out in places where you think it could use it. Don't get too excited though um, with your weaving. You want to make sure it's a little bit better hidden than maybe that, depending on who this is for. Um, the nice thing about this particular net is that it works great for like really little kids because it doesn't have the detachable stuffed animal eyes. They're just sewed on. Um, you can also do the eyes with like buttons, felt, anything like that if you're not really interested in doing the yarn ones. And like we did for our friend before, we're just going to snip that. Sorry, that was off camera. Snip, there we go. Just kind of move this around a little bit. There we go. We have a blob. All right, so let me get set up to do our teal friend, and then we will do that one, the sewing on that one, and the stuffing and all of that. And actually, we're getting short on time. So I think I'll show you how to do this guy, and then I'll jump cut to this one done, and we'll go from there. So let me get myself a nice little length of yarn here. All right, snip. <laughs> there we go. So you should have a nice little length of yarn. It doesn't have to be particularly long or short. It depends on your preference. Whoops, I need the working yarn over here. Okay, so you're gonna take your loose piece of yarn, you're gonna wrap it around kind of the base of the fish. It can be in any particular kind of way. You don't have to necessarily do it like this. Um, it's up to you how you want your fish to look. Sometimes I like to do a little knot, or um, just kind of pull it tight just to see how it looks. I think we can live with that. So now we're going to tie this off. And we're going to hide our ends a little bit because the thing about it is this could slip off rather easily so I like to casually just kind of sew around it just so that I know it's going to stay in place in a couple of spots that also helps to hide the tail a little bit because then you know for sure that it's not going to like pop out at all um, when you get done with the sewing part. So I'm going to go around on this side to right about here where you can see it's kind of cutting in to the body of the fish. Right through there, there we go. Pull that tight and then do another little wrap around here. And the way you sew this doesn't really matter too too much as long as you have ends that stay. So we're going to trim this right up here by our little knot there. And there we go. The end isn't really visible. So that's what matters. Now we're going to go to this side. We're going to take our little length of yarn here and we're going to gently put it through the eye of our needle. And we're going to gently sew this one in a similar, this side in a similar way. Um, we have slightly less yarn to work with, so keep that in mind as you're kind of going. 
Um, as I mentioned, this part doesn't really matter as much if you're just making this for your own whims or you're planning on using it for more decorative purposes, but I would recommend making sure that things are secured if you're giving it to a kid, especially if it's a little kid, because you don't want them to decide they want to eat it and then, you know, next thing you know you're taking them to the emergency room because they successfully managed to get the tail part of the yarn off. Alright, so let's trim that. Oops. There we go. I did not choose a good scissors for this, I will admit it. Alright, so we've got our little fish friend here. And you can see my little stitches along the tail on this one. You can't really see them on this one. I did a better job of hiding them on this one. Um, so now we're going to take our contrasting color, which you can use whatever color you desire. It just has to stand out against whatever color your base color is. So I'm going to myself a little tail here. And snippity snip. There we go. Set that over there. And we're gonna feed this through our needle. I like to knot the end here just to be safe. Um, it doesn't have to be a particularly big knot, it just has to be a knot. So we're going to pick a spot on our fish friend, just kind of insert our needle through the head of said fish, and pull it to about there. And then on this side, we're going to go through about here, and push it back through. And the main thing about this is you want it to start looking like eyes. You don't really want it to look too much like X's because, you know, it's not a dead fish, but it's just a little fish friend. Um, I like to try and cover up the little tail here as much as I can but I do accept that that's not always possible, so sometimes I settle for just kind of little eyes. Or biggish eyes, in this case. Okay, so we're gonna call that good enough for this side. Whoops. We're gonna trim this little tail here. There. Not a whole lot, just a little smidge of yarn. Alright, so now we're gonna push this back over to the other side and we're going to find our little eye that we have on this side and that looks pretty good I think. We're going to do pretty much the same thing on this side. Just kind of weave it through a little bit with these stitches here. You want it to make be clear that there's something, you know, not really the fish there. That's a little uneven, but it's not too, too bad. Um, if I were doing this specifically as like a gift for someone, I'd be a little bit more careful about making sure the eyes are pretty close to symmetrical. The best way I've found to really do that is to basically, as you're going, slide it through, directly through, so that you can see for sure that it's going to line up nicely. We just need to do one more pass and then we'll tie this off. And then we should be pretty much done. Uh, I'm sorry for taking more than an hour for you guys. Um, I suppose it kind of works because it took me like three and a half hours to do this. Um, Well, maybe not three and a half yet, but it will be soon, surprisingly. So, alright. 
So now we're gonna desperately try to get this little tail hidden. I did not give myself enough yarn to work with. So I'm gonna tuck that in there. And uh, just trim this right here. So here's our pretty much finished little fish friend. It's big, it's got a lot of holes in places. Um, as you can see, this one is much smaller. It's got more kind of work on the tail. Um, one of the things this pattern specifies is that you're supposed to take a little bit of yarn, go through, go around, go through, go around, and just kind of add a little bit of work to the tail. Um, and sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. It just kind of depends on the fish that I'm working on. So really quickly to take up just a teensy bit more of your time. I will show you how to do that if you want that for your fish. If you're not interested, you can feel free to skip ahead however long. Um, this should only take like a couple of minutes, if that, so we'll try and do that really quickly and then we'll go from there. So if this is where you choose to leave, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been an interesting video for you. Um, it's certainly been a fun experience for me and Whoops, how do we manage that? I have no idea. Oh, I see, it didn't go the way I thought it would. All right, so we'll do that again, and then move this up here. So you want it to be around, and then you're gonna pull it tight. And you'll notice that adds kind of a little bit of texture there. Then go through, like right about here. And wrap it around a second time. I'm going to move that up so it goes over, like so. And that just adds a little bit of texturing to the tail. So I'm going to do that one more time, I think, just to add a nice little bit of texturing to the tail. We're going to swap sides again and go back to this one really quickly, just like that. And now it's got a little bit more of a tail to it. So now we have these two ends. We're just gonna weave these in the way we did before. So we're gonna start by doing something a bit like that. Go through this loop here. So it blocks it like that. Push her through. Trim the end at a spot where it's hard to see it. There we go. Just gonna massage this a little bit so that it hides the tail on this side. Uh, and of course this side has not on it because I didn't think ahead, but that's fine. So we're just gonna tuck it through here. Just kind of do the same thing again and pull that through and that should presumably be good enough so now we have a bit more of a tail to our fish so thank you guys so much for watching um i have a couple of recommendations in the description for books if you are interested in knitting tiny animals and you would like to look at books specifically from the InfoSoup library system, which is what Algoma and Sturgeon Bay and all of those libraries are part of. Owl's Net, I think, is the other name for it. So, yeah, if you're interested in more knitting books that are actually in the Owl's Net system, I have a list in the video description. 
of books that you can look into and whether or not they're on um, they're in the system or, or if they're just kind of books that I thought were good that I recommend the book that I am using that I showed y'all at the beginning which is Kath Dalmeny's World of Knitted Toys is not available in the Owl's Net system. I actually went out and purchased this off Amazon. As far as I can tell, it's not in print. So if you want a copy of it, you have to go specifically on Amazon or another book retailer and search for it. Um, if you're the kind of person that likes knitting animals or things like that, I would highly recommend it. There are a lot of options of things that you can learn how to knit in here many of which are very fun. <laughs> there's a turtle, there's a couple of other fish patterns. It's not specifically this fellow, although this is their simple fish pattern if you're looking for something that's really easy. So if you liked what you saw here, uh, those are options for you. They'll be in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. Bye!